Assalamualaikum dan salam sejahtera. Selamat datang kepada pelajar-pelajar baru ke JMTI. Saya Puan Azura dari Jabatan Teknologi Kejuruteraan Komputer merupakan pengajar bagi subjek DKC 1201 iaitu Digital Elektronik. Untuk pengetahuan anda semua, subjek digital elektronik ini mempunyai enam topik utama. Untuk minggu pertama ini, kamu semua akan mempelajari topik asas number yang merangkumi tajuk kecil iaitu binary numbers, decimal numbers, octal numbers dan juga hexadecimal numbers. Objektif am um, untuk mempelajari subjek ini ialah untuk kamu mengetahui dan memahami sistem-sistem nombor perpuluhan, perduaan, perlapanan dan perenembalasan serta menukar dari sistem ke sistem yang lain. Untuk itu, mari kita sama-sama saksikan video yang telah saya ambil dari channel The Organic Chemistry Tutor dan channel Cik Guchong. In this video, we're going to talk about number systems. The first number system that you need to be familiar with is the decimal system. Now when you hear the word decimal, what do you think of? Think of the prefix deci. What does that mean? When I hear the word deci, I think of one-tenth of a whole. For example, there's ten decimeters in one meter. I also think of the word decade. A decade corresponds to ten years. And so deci is associated with ten. And in fact, the decimal number system is a base 10 system. And so what this means is that there's 10 different numbers in the decimal system. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. So that's a total of 10 numbers. Now, this system is used for everyday counting, for example, 12 or 36 or 468. We use the decimal system to represent numbers, and it works pretty well. Now, the next system that you need to be familiar with is the binary system. So when you hear the prefix by, what do you think of? By means two, and so the binary system is a base two system. It's very useful for computers or any type of digital circuits. There's only two numbers here, 0 and 1. In a typical digital computer, 0 means off. 1 means that the system is in the on state. Next, we have the octal system. And when you hear the word octal or octa, what do you think of? I think of an octagon. An octagon is basically a polygon with eight sides. So octa means eight. So the octal number system is a base eight system. So there's eight numbers that we can use in this system. The first being zero, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's a total of eight numbers, including zero. Next, we have the hexadecimal system. Now, what is meant by the prefix hexa? Hexa, think of a hexagon. A hexagon has six sides, and so hexa means six. We know decimal corresponds to 10, and so six plus 10 will give us 16. Therefore, the hexadecimal system is a base 16 system. And so the numbers are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, seven, eight, nine. So we have all 10 numbers in the decimal system, but we also have six letters. And so those letters are A, B, C, D, E, and F. Now A corresponds to 10 in the decimal system. B in the hexadecimal system corresponds to 11 in the decimal system. C is 12, D is 13, E is 14, F is 15. So that's a total of 16 numbers, including zero. Now let's talk about how we can convert a decimal number to a binary number and into an octal and a hexadecimal number using the technique called successive division. So let's say we have the number 348. 
If you see a subscript 10, that means it's in the base 10 system, which means it's a decimal number. So the first thing you want to do is take 348 and divide it by 2. So if you type that in, you'll get exactly 174. So it's 174, remainder is 0. Next, take 174 and then divide that by 2. So that's exactly 87. So it's 87, remainder 0. Next, if we take 87 and divide it by 2, we're going to get 43.5. So it's 43, remainder 1. But first, let's write it like this. So this 43 gets transferred here. And then to get the remainder 1, you multiply 2 by 0.5, and that will give you the remainder 1. I'm going to write my answer like this for now. Now, if we take 43 and divide that by 2, that's going to be 21.5, which is 21, remainder 1. And then we need to take 21, divide that by 2. So that's 10.5, which is 10, remainder 1. And then 10 divided by 2 is exactly 5, so 5 remainder 0. And then 5 divided by 2 is 2.5, so 2 remainder 1. And then 2 divided by 2 is exactly 1, so 1 remainder 0. And then 1 divided by, I'm running out of space here, 1 divided by 2, that's 0 0.5, so 0 remainder 1. What we have on top is the least significant bit, and this here is the most significant bit. Now you can find your answer just by looking at all of the remainder values, which is here. And so that's the binary number that's equivalent to 348. So you need to read it from the bottom to the top. So the answer is 1, 0, 1, 0, and then one, 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 zero, zero. So that's how we can convert a decimal number into a binary number using successive division. Now let's convert this number into an octal number in the base eight system. So if we look at the last example where we converted 348 into a binary number we were dividing it by 2 because binary it's based on the base 2 system by means 2. The octal system is based on the base 8 system so instead of dividing it by 2 and collecting the remainders we're going to divide it by 8 this time. So 348 divided by 8 that's gonna be 43.5 so this is 43 remainder. Now to find the remainder, multiply 8 by 0.5. So 8 times 0.5 is 4. So it's 43 remainder 4. Next, take 43 and divide it by 8. And this will give you 5.375. So it's 5 remainder. And then multiply the 8 by 0.375. 8 times 0.375, that will give you 3. Next, take the 5 and divide it by 8. Now, 5 is less than 8, so we can say that 8 goes into 5 0 times with a remainder of 5. But if you do 5 divided by 8, you're going to get 0 0.625. And so the 0 gets transferred here. And then if you multiply 8 by 0.625, you should get this number, the original number that you started with which will go here. So this is the most significant uh, digit and above we have the least significant digit. So we're going to read it from the bottom to the top. So 348 base 10 as a decimal number is equivalent to 534 or 534 in the octal system. And so that's how you can convert a decimal number into an octal number using successive division. Now let's talk about how to convert the decimal number into a hexadecimal number using successive division. So
So let's use the same number, 348. Now let's convert it to a hexadecimal number. Now the hexadecimal number is basically a number in the base 16 system. So this time, instead of dividing by 2 or 8, we're going to divide by 16. So if we take 348 and divide it by 16, this will give us 21.75. And so that's 21 remainder. To find the remainder, multiply 16 by 0.75. So 16 times 0.75, that's 12. So it's 21 remainder 12. Now let's take 21 and then let's divide that by 16. So 21 divided by 16 is 1.3125. And so we have one remainder. Now let's multiply 16 by 0.3125. And that's going to give us 5. So it's one remainder 5. Next, take 1 divided by 16. Now we know 1 doesn't go into 16, so 16 goes into 1 0 times with a remainder of whatever you see here, in this case a remainder of 1. And so we're going to read it this way. So we have a 1, a 5, and a 12. Now 12, because it's larger than 9, we need to convert it to a letter. So remember, 10 corresponds to A, 11 corresponds to B, and 12 corresponds to C. So it's 1, 5, C. So therefore, we could say this. 348 in the base 10 system is 1, 5, C in the base 16 system. And so that's how we can convert a decimal number into a hexadecimal number using successive division. Now, for those of you who are looking for a specific conversion technique, such as how to convert from octo to hexadecimal. I'm going to post some links in the description section of this video. So feel free to take a look at that and you can find more specific conversion techniques. But just to review, we talked about converting a decimal number into the binary, the octo, and the hexadecimal system. And we use division to accomplish that, basically, or more specifically, successive division. Now, what if we want to go backwards? Well, the opposite of division is multiplication. So we need to use some sort of multiplication process to go back into the decimal system. And I want to show you the pattern of going from binary to decimal, hexadecimal to decimal, and octal to decimal. So let's start with this binary number that we calculated earlier in this video. And so what we're going to do is we're going to multiply these binary numbers by powers of 2 because the binary number is in the base 2 system. So the first one, we're going to multiply by 2 to the 0. And the second one, by 2 to the first power. And then the pattern will just continue. So as you go to the left, you could see that the exponents are increasing by 1. And so we're going to have 1 times 2 to the 8, and then we're going to multiply these two. So that's going to be 0 times 2 to the 7, and then 1 times 2 to the 6, and then 0 times 2 to the 5th. And then after that, it's 1 times 2 to the 4th, plus 1 times 2 to the 3rd, plus 1 times 2 squared, plus 0 times 2 to the 1st, plus 0 times 2 to the 0. Now, I don't need to write all of this because we really don't need the zeros, but I want to show you the process by which we can convert all of these other number systems into the decimal system. So zero times anything is zero. So these numbers we can ignore. Two to the eighth power. If you multiply eight two together, so if you multiply two by itself eight times, that's going to give you 256. Two to the sixth power, is 64. 2 to the 4th is 16. 2 to the 3rd is 8. 2 squared is 4. And so 256 plus 64 plus 16 plus 8 plus 4, that will give us our original number of 348 in the base 10 system. 
And so that's one way in which you can convert a binary number into a decimal number. Now let's talk about how we can convert an octal number into a decimal number using multiplication. So the first number that we see, we're going to multiply it by a power of 8 rather than a power of 2 in the case of binary numbers. But the pattern is going to be the same. So instead of 2 to the 0, we're going to multiply the first one by 8 to the 0, and then the second one by 8 to the first, and the third one by 8 squared. So it's going to be 5 times 8 squared plus 3 times 8 to the first power plus 4 times 8 to the 0 power. Now, 8 squared, that's basically 8 times 8, which is 64. And then 5 times 64 is 320. Now, 3 times 8 is 24. And anything raised to the 0 power is 1. So 8 to the 0 is 1. 1 times 4 is 4. So we need to add 320 plus 24 plus 4. And that will give us 348 in the base 10 system. And so that's how you can go back from the octo system into the base 10 system. Now let's talk about how we can convert a hexadecimal number into a decimal number. Now the first thing we're going to do is change C. Recall that A corresponds to 10, B corresponds to 11, and C corresponds to 12. So the first number we're going to multiply by a power of 16. So the first one is going to be 16 to the 0, and the second number we're going to multiply by 16 to the first, and the last one by 16 squared. So it's 1 times 16 squared plus 5 times 16 to the first power plus 12 times 16 to the 0 power. 16 squared is 256. 5 times 16 is 80. 16 to the 0 power is 1, so we have 12 times 1, which is 12. And adding these three numbers will give us 348. So notice that if you want to go from the binary system to the decimal system, multiply everything by powers of 2. If you want to go from, let's say, the octo system to the decimal system, you need to multiply by powers of 8 because the octo system is a base 8 system. And for the hexadecimal system, which is in the base 16 system, multiply the numbers by powers of 16. And any letters, you need to convert it into a number. Now, this pattern of power multiplication is also found within the decimal uh, system as well. So the first number, we're going to multiply by 10 to the 0, the second one by 10 to the 1, and the third by 10 squared, because this number is in the base 10 system, as we could see by the subscript there. Now, 10 to the 0, we know it's 1. 10 to the 1 is 10. 10 squared is 100. So we can see that the 8 is in the 1's place, the 4 is in the 10's place, and the 100, or 10 squared, that's in the, the 100's place, which makes sense for a base 10 system. So we can represent 348 as being 3 times 10 squared plus 4 times 10 to the first power plus 8 times 10 to the 0 power. Now 3 times 10 squared, we know 10 squared or 10 times 10 is 100. 100 times 3 is 300. And here we have 4 times 10 which is 40. 10 to the 0 is 1, so 8 times 1 is 8. So 300 plus 40 plus 8 is 348. And so this process, this multiplication by the powers this is a base 10 system, so we multiply it by powers of 10. We can also use it for the decimal system, or any number system for that matter. Now, there's another way in which we can convert 348 into a binary number, and let's talk about it. Now, it's helpful to understand the pattern for binary numbers. We know the first number will be multiplied by 2 to the 0, and then the next one by 2 to the 1st, and so forth. Now 2 to the 8 is 256 and 2 to the 9 
is 256 times 2, so that's going to be 512. And so I'm going to write these numbers down. So we have 512 as 2 to the 9, 256 is next as 2 to the 8, and then 128 for 2 to the 7, and 64, 32, 16, 8, 4, 2, and 1. So we're going to use the subtraction method to convert this into a binary number. The highest number that is that can be broken down into a base 2 number, which are these numbers here, the highest number that's less than 348 is 256. Now, if you subtract 348 by 256, this will give you 92. Now, the highest number that is less than 92 at this point is 64. Now, if we do 92 minus 64, that's going to give us 28. The highest number under 28 is 16. So now let's subtract 28 by 16. That will give us 12. So we can use an 8. 12 minus 8 is 4. And then we'll stop at 4. So notice that if you add 256 plus 64 plus 16 plus 8 plus 4, it will give you 348. Now let me bring your attention uh, back to the bottom. So every number that we use, every number that is highlighted in red, replace it with a 1. Every other number that we didn't use, replace it with a 0. And so that's another way in which you can convert a decimal number into a binary number. Now any zeros to the far left are insignificant, so we don't need this zero. So our answer starts from here. And this is the binary number that we had in the beginning. 1010111100. Zero, one, zero, one, 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 zero, zero. And so that's another way in which you can convert a decimal number into a binary number using subtraction. Now once you have this binary number, you can easily convert it into an octal number or into a hexadecimal number. And the way you do this is you group it. 2 to the third power is 8. And so if you want to go from the binary system, that is a base 2 system, into an octo system, that is a base 8 system, you need to group the binary numbers in groups of, guess what, 3, the exponent that you see here. And so let's separate it into groups of 3. Now the first group is 1, 0, 1. The second group is 0, 1, 1. And the third group is 1, 0, 0. So now each group of 3 binary numbers convert it into a decimal number. And remember, to convert binary to a decimal, we need to multiply by powers of 2. So we would multiply this by 2 to the 0, which is 1, this one by 2 to the 1, which is 2, and this one by 2 squared, which is 4. So this is 4, 2, 1. So at this point, it's easier to use 4, 2, 1 instead of powers of 2. But understand that it's based on powers of 2. Now we have a 1 with a 4 and a 1 with the 1. So 4 plus 1 corresponds to 5. 0 plus 2 is 0, so we could ignore any zeros. Now, let's do the same thing for the others. 4, 2, 1. So here, we have a 1 associated with the 2 and the 1. 2 plus 1 is 3. And for the last one, we only have a 1 associated with the 4. And so that becomes 4. And now, we can see our answer. So therefore, this binary number is equivalent to 534 in the octo system. And we had that number earlier in this video, if you want to rewind it. And so that's how you can convert a binary number into an octal number by grouping the binary numbers in groups of three. Now let's see if we can apply the same conversion process when converting a binary number into a hexadecimal number. So let's use the same binary number that we've been using in this video. Now 2 to the fourth power is 16. 
So 2 corresponds to a number in a binary system. 16 corresponds to the hexadecimal system. So to convert from binary to hexadecimal system, we need to group the binary numbers in groups of 4, since 2 to the 4 is 16. And so here we're going to have the first group of 4, and here is the second. Now notice that we don't have a group of 4 on the left. In that case, just add three zeros. So we have 0, 0, 1 for the left side, and then in the middle, 0, 1, 0, and then on the right side, 1, 1, 0, 0. Now we're going to convert these binary numbers into decimal numbers. So we need to multiply by powers of 2. So this is going to be 2 to the 0, 2 to the 1, 2 squared, 2 to the 3rd. 2 to the 0 is 1, 2 to the 1 is 2, 2 squared is 4, 2 cubed is 8. So this time, instead of writing powers of 2, we're going to use 8, 4, 2, and 1. Now for the left side, we have a 1 associated with the 1. So the binary number 0001 has a decimal value of 1. In the middle, we have a 1 next to the 4 and a 1. So 4 plus 1 will give us 5. For the right side, we have a 1 next to the 8 and the 4. Now 8 plus 4 is 12. But when dealing with hexadecimal numbers, you need to convert it into a letter. A is 10, B is 11, C is 12. So it's 1, 5, C. So our answer is 15 C in the hexadecimal system, which we had earlier in this video. And so this process of grouping binary numbers can be useful, let's say, if you want to convert from the octal system to a hexadecimal system. So you would convert the octal system to a binary system, and from binary, you would go to the hexadecimal system. Now, if you want to see some examples of this uh, process in action, on YouTube, you could do a search, octal to hexadecimal conversion, and then type in organic chemistry tutor. And then you could find a video that I made on how to convert from octal to hexadecimal, and how to convert from a hexadecimal system to an octal system. But now there's one last thing I want to talk about, and that is how to convert a decimal number into a binary coded decimal number. Now, for the binary coded decimal system, what happens is each digit you represent it as a group of four binary numbers. So 3, 4, 8, we're going to convert each number separately into a binary number using groups of four. So since we're using a group of four binary numbers, it's best to write this 8, 4, 2, 1. Now, to get 3, we need to add up 2 and 1. And so every number that's highlighted, it replaces it with a 1. The numbers that we don't use, we replace it with a 0. So the binary number, 0, 1, 1, correlates to 3. Now, to get 4, we only need to use 4. So we only need to replace that with a 1. Everything else, replace it with a 0. So 0, 1, 0, 0 correlates to 4. Now for the last one, we only need to use an 8. So we're just going to replace that with a 1. So 1, 0, 0, 0 correlates to 8. So 348 is equivalent to the binary coded decimal 0, 0, 1, 1. 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0. And so that's how you can convert a decimal number into a binary coded decimal. Now let's say if we want to go backwards. Let's say if we have the number 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. How can we convert this into a decimal? Now keep in mind, this is not a regular binary number, but it's a binary coded decimal. Which means we need to break it up into groups of four. Here we only have two numbers, so we need to add two zeros. So the first group of four is going to be 0, 0, 1, 1. That's for this side. And the second group of four is 1, 0, 0, 1. That's for the middle. And on the right side, 0, 1, 0, 1. 
So let's write the numbers 8, 4, 2, 1 under each group of four binary numbers. Now on the left, we have a 1 associated with a 2 and a 1. So 2 plus 1 is 3. In the middle, we have a 1 associated with an 8 and a 1. 8 plus 1 is 9. And on the far right, we have a 1 next to the 4 and a 1. 4 plus 1 is 5. So this binary coded decimal is equivalent to 395 in the decimal system. So that's how we can go from BCD to decimal. And so that's it for this video. Hopefully it gave you a good introduction into number systems and how to convert from one number system into another. Thanks for watching. Selamat datang ke channel Jigo Chong dan hari ini kita akan sambung untuk bab 2 matematik tingkatan 4 dan kita akan tumpukan kepada bahagian keempat iaitu kita akan belajar pengiraan melibatkan operasi tambah dan tolak. Jadi dalam video ini kita akan membincangkan cara pengiraan melibatkan operasi tambah dan tolak bagi nombor dalam berbagai asas dan kita juga akan gunakan kalkulator untuk menyimak jawapan untuk pengiraan yang melibatkan asas uh, nombor 2 dan nombor 8. Jadi mari kita lihat uh, kaedah yang digunakan untuk pengiraan. Jadi dalam bahagian ini sebenarnya kita ada dua kaedah utama iaitu bentuk lazim dan penukaran asas. Untuk bentuk lazim ini sebenarnya ini kaedah ni sudah lama kita gunakan untuk asas 10. Cuma nya untuk kali ini kita akan gunakannya untuk asas yang berbeza lah. Jadi kita lihat dulu untuk tambah tu. Kalau kita tambah, kita perlu tambah ke depan kalau sudah lebih atau sama dengan asas. Dan untuk tolak pula, kita perlu pinjam dari depan kalau tak cukup ditolak. Jadi itu adalah untuk bentuk lazim. Dan untuk penukaran asas ni sebenarnya adalah ha, menukarkan asas itu kepada asas 10 dulu. Selepas tu kita buat kiraan dan kita tukar balik kepada asas asal. Jadi uh, kita ada dua keadaan ni lah. Jadi kita, mari kita lihat uh, dulu imbas kembali yang asas 10. Jadi di sini saya akan imbas kembali uh, bentuk lazim yang melibatkan nombor asas 10 dahulu. Jadi kita akan tuliskan uh, dalam bentuk ni iaitu 1, 3, 4, 5 tambah dengan 7, 4, 6. Jadi kita akan tambahkan mengikut nilai tempat di sini kita akan tambahkan dulu yang uh, yang sebelah kanan dulu iaitu 5 tambah 6 jadi kita akan dapat 11 Dan disebabkan 11 ni sudah melebihi asas 10, maka kita hanya tuliskan 1 dan 1 itu akan anjak ke depan. Dan kita akan tambahkan 1 tambah 4 tambah 4 iaitu dapat 9. 9 ni kurang daripada asas 10, jadi kita akan uh, tuliskan nombor 9 sahaja. Dan kita tambahkan terus untuk nilai tempat seterusnya iaitu 3 tambah 7, kita akan dapat lagi 10 dan di sini 10 itu memang adalah nombor yang sama dengan asas kita iaitu kita hanya akan tuliskan sifar selepas tu satu tu tulis ke depan jadi satu tambah satu tu jadi dua jadi di sini jawapannya adalah dua sifar sembilan satu asas 10 jadi ini memang cara yang biasa kita gunakan untuk asas 10 iaitu apabila kita tambah kita dapat nombor yang sama atau lebih itu kita kena anjakkan ke nilai tempat yang seterusnya. Jadi sekarang kita akan lihat soalan yang melibatkan asas yang lain. Jadi di sini kita mempunyai asas dua iaitu saya akan tunjukkan dengan dua kaedah. Satunya adalah bentuk lazim dan satunya adalah penukaran asas. Jadi untuk bentuk lazim ini kita akan tuliskan seperti biasa iaitu 1 sifar 1 tambah dengan 1 1 1. Jadi kita akan tuliskan di sini selepas tu kita akan tambah mengikut nilai tempat yang paling kanan sekali iaitu 1 tambah 1. Iaitu sebenarnya kita dapat 2 dan hati-hati sebab 2 ni memang sama nilai dengan kita punya asas maksudnya kita tak boleh tuliskan 2 tetapi kita akan tuliskan sifar dan anjakkan 1 ke nilai tempat nilai tempat yang depan tu. Jadi sekali lagi kita 1 tambah 1 tu dapat 2 lagi iaitu kita tak boleh tuliskan 2 tapi kita kena tuliskan sifar dan anjakkan 1 ke depan. Dan di sini kita ada 1 tambah 1 iaitu sekali lagi dapat 2 iaitu kita kena anjak ke depan sudah dan tinggal 1 dan tuliskan nilai tempat depan tu 1. Jadi jawapan kita ni adalah 1 1 sifar sifar asas 2. Ha, jadi begitulah caranya nak buat jenis soalan yang melibatkan asas dua dan kita boleh gunakan kalkulator untuk menyemak jawapan. Jadi sekali lagi saya ajar semua macam mana semak menggunakan kalkulator 
tekan mod dua kali dan nampak best tekan tiga. Selepas tu untuk asas dua ni adalah dipanggil sebagai binary iaitu kita tekan butang ini dan kita akan nampak ada B di situ. Selepas tu kita hanya tekan nombornya 1 sifar 1 tambah 1 1 1. Jadi tekan sama dengan. Jadi di sini kita memang dapat jawapan tu. Jadi kalkulator ni boleh digunakan untuk menjawab soalan yang objektif dan juga untuk menyemak jawapan untuk soalan lah kalau ni adalah soalan subjektif. Jadi seterusnya saya akan tunjukkan juga kaedah yang melibatkan penukaran asas. Penukaran asas tu maksudnya kita akan tukar dulu kepada asas 10, buat kiraan dan selepas tu tukar balik kepada asas 2. Jadi di sini kita tuliskan 1 sifar 1 ini, kita tuliskan ini tempatnya 2 kuasa sifar, 2 kuasa 1, 2 kuasa 2. Jadi nilai nombor ini adalah 1 darab 2 kuasa 2 tambah dengan 1 darab 2 kuasa sifar. Iaitu kita boleh sebenarnya tekan kalkulator dapat ni 4 dan ini dapat 1 iaitu 5 asas 10. Selepas tu kita tukar juga untuk 1, 1, 1. Jadi sekali lagi kita tuliskan nilai tempatnya. Dan ini adalah 1 darab 2 kuasa 2. Tambah 1 darab 2 kuasa 1. Tambah 1 darab dengan 2 kuasa sifar. Maka di sini kita dapat ni adalah 4 tambah 2 tambah 1. Iaitu 7. Dan kita tambahkan 2 nombor ini. Kita akan dapat ni. Ha, ini adalah tambah seperti biasalah 5 tambah 7 ni semua pun tahu adalah 12 iaitu 1, 2, asas 10 dan sekarang kita perlu tukar balik kepada asasnya iaitu 1, 2 kita kena tukarkan kepada asas 2 maka kita bahagi dengan 2 jadi dapat 6 bagi sifar bahagi lagi dengan 2 dan dapat hasilnya 3 bagi sifar bahagi lagi 2 kita dapat 1 bagi 1 Lepas tu bagi dua lagi sifar, ni sifar satu. Jadi jawapannya memang satu-satu sifar-sifar asas dua. Iaitu sama juga jawapannya untuk bentuk lazim. Jadi bandingkan dua kaedah ni sebenarnya saya lebih suka bentuk lazim lah. Sebabnya kaedahnya lebih ringkas. Ha, berbanding dengan penukaran asas yang melibatkan penukaran untuk asas nombor dulu. Buat kiraan, lepas tu tukar balik. Iaitu tiga peringkat semuanya. Jadi mari kita lihat contoh seterusnya. Jadi kita lihat juga ni pula adalah asas nombor 7. Untuk asas nombor 7 ni kita tidak dapat gunakan kalkulator. Sebab kita punya kalkulator hanya ada asas 10, asas 2 dan asas 8. Jadi sekali lagi kita gunakan bentuk lazim ini. 5, 6, 4, 4, 5, 6, tambah. Jadi kita tambah ni, 4 tambah 6 ni kita dapat 10. 10 ini kalau kita perhatikan 10 tolak dengan 7 kita dapat hasilnya adalah 3. Maksudnya di sini kita hanya akan tulis 3 dan anjakkan 1 ke depan. Sebab kenapa anjak 1 ke depan tu? Aa, sebab dia sudah melebihi 7. Jadi kita tak boleh tuliskan aa, 10 di sana. Kita kena pecahkannya mengikut asas ni. Iaitu 7 sudah penuh kita tinggal 3. 1 itu kena anjak ke depan. Jadi sekali lagi dia tambah 1 tambah 6 7 jadi sebenarnya sudah penuh 7 tambah 5 12 iaitu kita sebenarnya hanya tuliskan 5 sebab 7 tu sudah satu ke depan. Dan sekali lagi kita tambah 6 tambah 4 jadi sekali lagi dapat 10 tapi kita bukan tulis 10 kita akan tuliskan 3 dan 1 ke depan. Jadi itulah jawapannya 1 3 5 3 asas 7 dan kita boleh gunakan asas ni untuk membuktikan jawapan kita iaitu tukar dulu kepada asas 10. 7 kuasa sifar, 7 kuasa 1, 7 kuasa 2. Jadi di sini kita dapat 7 darab dengan 7 kuasa 2. 6 darab 7 kuasa 1. Dan 4 darab dengan 7 kuasa sifar. Ini dapat... 5 darab dengan 49. Sebenarnya bahagian ni boleh kita tekan kalkulator supaya lebih cepat. Jadi bahagian ni kita tekan kalkulator kita dapat ni adalah 291 asas 10. Dan kita akan ulang proses yang sama untuk 456 iaitu 7 kuasa sifar, 7 kuasa 1, 7 kuasa 2. Jadi ini akan dapat 4 darab 7 kuasa 2. Tambah dengan 5 darab dengan 7 kuasa 1. 
dan tambah dengan 6 darab dengan 7 kuasa sifar. Jadi tekan calculator. Jadi kita akan dapat ni 237 asas 10. Jadi kita tambahkan dua nombor ini. Jadi kita tambah seperti biasa iaitu untuk asas 10 yang biasa kita gunakan. Jadi di sini kita minta tahu 1 tambah 7 tu 8. 9 tambah 3 tu 12. Anjak 1 ke depan jadi 5, 2, 8 asas 10. Selepas tu kita kena tukarkan asas 10 ni balik kepada asas 7. Jadi kita bahagi 7. Jadi 5, 2 ni keadaan 7 yang paling dekat tu adalah 7, 7, 49. Jadi dia tuliskan 7. Jadi bakinya adalah 3, 3, 8 tu adalah 7, 5, 35 asas. Jadi bakinya 3. Bagi 7 lagi 7, 1, 7. Jadi kita akan gunakan belakang ni tak cukup. Sifar. Bagi 5. Bagi 7 lagi 1. Bagi 3. Dan bagi 7 lagi sifar dan asas uh, bagi 1. Jadi jawapannya memang 1, 3, 5, 3 asas 7. Jadi begitulah soalan yang melibatkan tambah ini. Jadi tambah itu kita hanya perlu ingat. Kalau untuk bentuk lazim ini adalah lebih senang. Cuma yang kita kena hati-hati dengan aa, bilakah kita perlu anjak satu ke nilai tempat yang depan tu, Iaitu sama ada anda tambah hasilnya adalah sama atau lebih daripada asas tu anda perlu anjakkan satu ke depan. Okey, jadi mari kita lihat pula tolak. Jadi sebelum kita lihat asas yang lain tu, saya sediakan satu yang asas 10 untuk imbas kembali apa yang kita buat untuk penolakan. Jadi di sini kita perhatikan uh, nilai depan yang paling kecil tu 5 tolak 6 memang tak cukup. Maka kita akan pinjam dari depan, ini 2 pinjam 1 tinggal 1. Dan 5 ini kita akan tambah dengan 10. 10 ini adalah asas kita ada 10 digit maka kita akan tambah 10 untuk asas nombor 10 ini. Jadi 10 tambah 5 tu 15, tolak 6 kita dapat ni adalah 9. Selepas tu 1 tolak 1 sifar, 13, 3 tolak 7 tak cukup, maka kita akan gunakan 13 tolak 7 iaitu jadi 6. Jadi jawapan kita adalah 6 sifar 9 asas 10. Jadi ini adalah untuk asas 10, mari kita lihat contoh soalan yang asas lain. Jadi di sini kita ada asas 8, 6, 7, 3, asas 8, tolak dengan 1, 7, 5, asas 8. Jadi kalau bentuk lazim ini, kita akan tolakkan seperti ini. 6, 7, 3, 1, 7, 5, tolak. Jadi ini adalah asas 8. Eh? Jadi 3 tolak 5 ni tak cukup. Maka kita pinjam dari depan, 7 ni akan jadi 6. Selepas tu 3 ini akan tambah dengan asasnya iaitu 8. 8 tambah 3 tu 11, 11 tolak 5 tu adalah 6. Dan 6 tolak 7 tak cukup, kita akan pinjam ke depan, ni jadi 5. Dan 6 ni akan tambah lagi dengan 8. 14 tolak 7, 7. 5 tolak 1 tu adalah 4. Jadi jawapannya adalah 4, 7, 6, asas 8. Dari sekali lagi kita boleh gunakan kalkulator untuk semak jawapan kerana asas 8 tu dapat Ha, disemak dengan calculator. Jadi sekali lagi tekan on. Ha, jadi tekan mod dua kali. Tiga. Selepas tu kita kena tekan off. Iaitu untuk asas lapan. Jadi anda akan nampak all. Eh. Jadi tekan kan. Enam. Tujuh. Tiga. Tolak dengan. Satu. Tujuh. Lima. Jadi sama dengan. Iaitu jawapan yang kita buat tadi 476 asas 8 Jadi itu adalah cara untuk semak guna calculator Jadi kaedah yang kedua tu adalah penukaran asas Jadi sebenarnya kita kalau pandai kita guna bentuk lazim cukup lah Penukaran asas ni saya cuma ajar untuk anda faham lah ha, Jadi kita lihat 673 Tukarkan kepada asas ha, 10 Jadi kita kena carikan nilai nombor 6 darab 8 kuasa 2 tambah 7 darab 8 kuasa 1 tambah 3 darab dengan 8 kuasa sifar. Jadi tekan calculator. Jadi kita akan dapat 4, 4, 3 asas 10. Jadi kita akan buat pula untuk 1, 7, 5 asas 8. Jadi sebenarnya ini adalah apa yang anda belajar semasa bahagian yang pengenalan tu, Iaitu mencari nilai nombor. Jadi kita cuma perlu aa, darabkan setiap digit dalam Nombor tu dengan nilai tempatnya 
Maka kita akan calculator. Kita akan dapat ni 1, 2, 5. Jadi selepas tu kita akan tolakkan macam biasa. Jadi kita tolak ni kita akan dapat ni adalah dapat 3, 1, 8 asas 10. Maka kita kena bahagi balik untuk jadikan asas 8 iaitu bahagi 8. Jadi di sini kita akan dapat bahagikan 3, 1 bahagi 8. Kita gunakan gandaan 8 yang paling dekat itu 24. 8, 3, 24. Jadi dapat uh, 78, 8, 9, 72 dapat bagi 6. Bagi lagi 8 tu kita akan gunakan 8, 4, 32. Bakinya 7. Dan bahagi lagi 8 kita dapat ni bakinya adalah 4. Jadi jawapannya sama iaitu 4, 7, 6 asas 8. Jadi begitunya untuk uh, penolakan ini. Jadi mari kita lihat uh, contoh yang terakhir untuk bahagian ni. Adik-adik semua boleh uh, pausekan video untuk cuba dulu sebelum lihat penerangan. Jadi kita akan tolak seperti biasa iaitu 1, 4, 3, 5 asas 7. Tolak dengan 5, 4, 6 asas 7. Jadi di sini kita akan tolak macam biasa. 5 tolak 6 tu tak cukup, maka kita pinjam dan depan, 3 ni jadi 2, dan 5 ni kena tambah dengan asasnya iaitu 7. Jadi 7 tambah 5 tu 12, 12 tolak 6 tu 6. Jadi 2 ni tak cukup, pinjam dan depan lagi, kita akan dapat ni adalah 3, dan ini tambah lagi dengan 7. 7 tambah 2 tu 9, 9 tolak 4, 5. Selepas tu kita ada 1, 3 ini. Kita ingat ni bukan 13. Ha. Kita kena pinjam dari depan tu. Satu ni jadi sifar. Dan tiga ni kena tambah dengan tujuh. Jadi tujuh tambah tiga, sepuluh. Sepuluh tolak dengan lima, tinggal lima. Jadi jawapannya adalah lima, lima, enam, asas tujuh. Jadi begitulah jawapannya kalau kita gunakan betul lazim. Dan sekali lagi kita gunakan penukaran asas. Iaitu kita tukarkan kepada asas sepuluh. Jadi diharapkan setiap ni dengan nilai tempatnya. Jadi kita dapat ni 1 darab 7 kuasa 3. Tambah 4 darab 7 kuasa 2. Tambah dengan 3 darab dengan 7 kuasa 1. Dan 5 darab dengan 7 kuasa sifar. Tekan kalkulator. Jadi kita akan dapat ni adalah 5, 6, 5, asas 10. Kemudian kita buat sekali lagi untuk 5, 4, 6. Saya tak cukup tempat. Maka saya tulis di atas ini. Ini 7 kuasa sifar, 7 kuasa 1, 7 kuasa 2. Maka ini adalah 5 darab 7 kuasa 2. Tambah 4 darab 7 kuasa 1. Tambah dengan 6 darab dengan 7 kuasa sifar. Jadi sekali lagi kita tekan kalkulator. Dan kita dapat ni 2, 7, 9 asas 10. Jadi sekarang kita akan tolak 5, 6, 5 asas 10. Tolak dengan 2, 7, 9 asas 10. Maka kita akan dapat ni adalah 286 asas 10. Dan sekali lagi kita perlu tukarkan kepada asas yang asalnya yang dengan bahagi asas 7. Jadi 7, 4, 2, 8. 6 ni tak cukup. 7 sifar bagi 6. Jadi kita bagi 7 lagi. 7, 5, 3, 5 bagi 5. Dan kita bagi 7 lagi. Ha, bakinya adalah 5. Jadi jawapannya memang sama iaitu 5, 5, 6 asas 10. Jadi begitulah jenis soalan untuk tambah dan tolak melibatkan aa, nombor dalam berbagai asas. Saya harap video ini dapat membantu semua untuk memahaminya. Yang ini sebenarnya bentuk lazim lebih senang berbanding dengan penyukaran asas. Kerana bentuk lazim itu sebenarnya adalah hampir serupa dengan apa yang kita buat semasa asas 10. Cuma yang kita kena hati-hati. Kerana... Bagaimana pelajaran sekalian? Saya mengharapkan kamu semua dapat memahami pelajaran pada hari ini. Untuk mengukuhkan lagi kefahaman kamu, sila buat tugasan yang telah saya upload di Google Drive. Sampai berjumpa lagi pada minggu hadapan. Sekian terima kasih. Assalamualaikum.